Hi, Bob from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to take the wooden floor material from the last video and add in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic, used look. Before we get started, though, let's take a look at the files we'll be needing. Uh, it's this one, Floor Smudges Type A Medium 001, and also Gun Scratches 003. I have both of those saved to the hard drive, and I'll link them below the video. Okay, let's jump over to Blender. Okay, so this is the uh, scene as we left it last time. One thing I'm going to do though is grab the camera here and just lower that down a little bit. Uh, just because I want to catch the light a bit more as we work on these scratches and smudges. There we go. And another thing I'm going to do is slightly lower this bump value again. I really don't think it's required in this sort of setup. Good. Okay. So before I start adding in the imperfection maps, I do want to run off a quick render. Uh, reason being, I would like to be able to, uh, to to reference what we've done so far in a pre in a in, in a different render slot here. So let's go render. Good. So uh, once we're done, we'll be able to jump back to this and, and compare the differences. Uh, so I'll just click on slot two. So when we hit render again, it will go into that one instead, and then I'll jump back to our shading node. So, the first part we're going to be working on is the roughness map, uh, which is after this invert node for the gloss map. So let me just grab a few of these nodes, make a little bit of room for ourselves, and then right about here I'm going to load in a new texture image. Now the material converter can't load in imperfection maps at the moment at least, uh, it's something we need to do manually. So let's go find it. It's floor smudges type A media, that's the one. Let's grab the 3K one. Now if I go to the preview uh, mode, we'll notice there's a couple of different files you can choose. Um, we've got a white smudges on black background TIFF, uh, and then the same one as a JPEG, and then we've got a JPEG which is basically inverted with black smudges. Um, when you're working on a roughness map, it's easier to use the white smudges. So I'm going to grab the TIFF version of that, which will, uh, is basically 16-bit, where it means we'll get more detail from the texture, and hit open. I want to also change this to non-color data, because we don't want any color corrections to be applied. Uh, and I'll also duplicate this mapping node, because we might want the uh, the mapping of the smudges to differ from the floor. So let's just drop that in. Okay, now another little add-on that's very handy to use, it comes with Blender but you do have to enable it, it is uh, called Node Wrangler. So if you go up to Edit and then Preferences and then type in Node W, that'll find it, uh, you'll see the Node Wrangler add-on. Uh, make sure that's enabled because it allows you to do something that is really kind of uh, helpful. If you hold down Control Shift and then left click on this floor smudges node, it will automatically connect up a little viewer emission shader and lets you see the map um, without having to manually connect any nodes, which is really, really handy. So yeah, we can see our uh, smudges, um, how they're gonna be displayed on the uh, mesh currently. And they're looking a little bit too small compared to the size of the wood. So I'm actually gonna lower this a little bit. We want the footmarks to have the same scale um, as the, the boards on the floor. Yeah, so it doesn't look like tiny little feet, it looks like human sized feet. Uh, and I, I think that value works pretty well for us. So let's jump over to this multiply node. This is where we adjusted our roughness map and it's after this that we're going to bring in our overlay. To do that, go to uh, color and then mix RGB. And we'll bring in a mix RGB node set the type to screen, feed in the output of the multiply into the top value, and then the floor smudges into the bottom. Now what a screen node does is overlay the brighter parts of a texture. So if I lower this to zero, it's having no effect at the moment, and that's just our original roughness map from our wooden floor. If I start to increase this though, you'll see the footprints are now being overlaid on top of that so these areas are going to be rougher less less mirror like uh, less reflective um which is exactly the sort of effect that we want so now i can feed this into our roughness press control shift click to preview the shader again and now we can start to see our floor smudges coming through quite nicely yeah 
yeah, that looks good. Okay, so let's jump back to uh, camera mode. That's our that's our smudges in place, uh, and now what I can do is um, move on to to work on the on the scratches. So for that, we'll be adjusting the normal map. Okay, so below that, let's press Shift A, go to texture, and then add in another image texture. And this time, we'll bring in our scratches. Again, I'll need to navigate to where it is I keep those on my hard drive. And then it's gun scratches 003, good. So let's take a look at what textures we've got available because we've got quite a few. Um, and and we, we do this so it can be used for various different things. We, we've got a displacement map, normal maps, some overlays, um, which is all good. Now, in the case here, because we've already got an existing normal map, combining two normal maps is a little bit tricky. So we're going to avoid doing that and instead just bring in the black scratches on a white background because that's the that's the easiest one to use uh, in this instance. So let's load that in. Again, duplicate the mapping node so we can uh, control the mapping separately for this. That's at Shift D and just drop that down there. Feed in the UV from the coordinates there and then connect that up to our texture. Good. So if I again hit Control Shift and click, we can now see how the scratches will be uh, mapped. And we've got the opposite problem this time. We want this to be quite uh, we want the tiling to be more, so let's set this to about a value of 3, maybe 2.5. Yeah, I think that'll work quite nicely. And then this will, uh, this we can add to our, um, our existing normals. But first I need to change this to non-color data. We don't want any color corrections applied to this texture. And then what I'll do is jump over to the end of these normals these normal nodes, we've got the normal map and then the bump map. I'm going to duplicate this bump map and feed it in like so and then connect that up. So now what I can do is feed the scratches into this height input like so, reconnect the shader by pressing control shift and left clicking and now we can start to see our scratches coming through and even at a relatively low strength of 0.1 it's still way too harsh so let's uh, let's turn that down a little maybe 0.02 maybe just a little bit higher we do want this to be a very subtle effect I think that will work well for us uh, once we render, once we render it out properly so with all the uh, material work done it's time to hit render and see what we get and there we go. So yeah, um, st still a few adjustments I'd make. Uh, I, I think I'm happy with the floor smudges. I think they work pretty much well without any adjustment. The scratches I still think could be lowered a little bit, uh, just a little bit, and maybe the, the tiling reduced just a, just a tiny amount as well. But I think for the purpose of a tutorial, that does a good job. We can compare the difference with the uh, with the slots here now that we've rendered out both. So that's the original uh, material, and that's the adjustments we've made here. And when you look at it like that, you can really see the uh, the impact these surface imperfections can have on your finished material. So in summary, we've downloaded some surface imperfection maps from polygon.com, namely some smudges and scratches, and then brought them in uh, to our existing wooden floor material to give our floor a more realistic used look.